Uh, if you can see the uh, uh, title of my presentation, it's more about my uh, personal reflections and observations as opposed to a scholarly analysis. I actually went to Beijing for fun, to play. I didn't do any work. So, uh, but uh, um, um, I, I'm very happy to share some of my uh, experience and observations about uh, what the Olympics uh, meant uh, for uh, China or for the Chinese. Uh, before that, I have this uh, clip from a South Park. Uh, in the fall, they uh, did the first program. Uh, it's, on the, it's on the China problem. How many of you have seen that? I'm going to show it. <laughs> the whole. Just a couple of clips. Is this the whole view? So this is uh, uh, the beginning of the episode, and then uh, this is what the kids um, um, conspired to do. <laughs>
Uh, this is really uh, my research area to talk about the, uh, the Chinese uh, images overseas. Uh, but today's topic is really to focus on the, what might be the domestic reading of the Olympics. And, uh, but I want to start it with this um, pretty much to say that as a sort of simplification, the Olympics presented a global image of China but there are localizer realities and the localizer readings of the event. And so in this case, it's a localizer reading in the United States, as in a small town, USA. Uh, but I wanted to share a little bit about uh, what I believe is the localized readings among the ordinary Chinese uh, about the games. And of course, I cannot really speak for the Chinese. Uh, and uh, what I, my comments are primarily based on uh, my uh, personal experience uh, watching the games, uh, both from afar uh, in Chicago and LA, but also uh, up close at the venues in Beijing, but also as an inside and outsider, uh, as a Chinese a native living and working in the United States. And also, I think very importantly, I represent a very urban view, uh, believe it or not. Uh, I think uh, most of my interactions and uh, most of my upbringing um, actually had, uh, took place uh, in Beijing and in Shanghai. And, um, as you all know that uh, uh, China is a very diverse country uh, with a very uneven development. And in fact, one of the national surveys uh, before the Olympics, uh, uh, they asked uh, the public uh, in terms of uh, uh, their awareness and interest in the games. And so they asked people about uh, whether they know the date of the game and uh, the, uh, the theme of the game, the, uh, uh, you know, the, the mascots and all of that. And what they found was the highest awareness and interest were actually in the urban centers, and the least were actually in the rural villages, and the, the mid small towns are somewhere in the middle. Um, let me. Uh I also wanted to show this, I guess, you know, my presentation is much longer than the 15 minutes uh, uh, allocated to me, so I'm just going to rush through some of these. But I want to show you this because I thought it was interesting, important, since we are talking about the Olympics here in LA again, and two of the most important milestones for China uh, relating to the Olympics uh, uh, took place uh, in LA. The first time they uh, uh, competed was in the 1932 games in LA, and then the first time they won the gold medal was in LA in 1984. <clears throat> uh, the way I read the Olympics um, pretty much have uh, the, based on the three uh, premises. The first, uh, to me, the Olympics uh, is really a context. Uh, what I mean by this, uh, it has to be placed and contextualized um, as part of the series of these events uh, in 2008 in the short run, but also the longer historical context as it was talked about earlier uh, in, the, uh, uh, in, the, in the first panel. And, uh, and uh, we always ask the question whether the Olympics is, a, is, a, is the age of a social change, and I believe the Olympics was a